I'm here because I have been treated uh, for a malignant glioma in my right frontal lobe of my brain. When we were initially evaluating him, it was on the basis of his MRI scan. You know, he had a very large brain tumor, uh, but it was in his frontal lobe. I just started having uh, these really odd sensations, like uh, waves of anxiety would come over me. And eventually they determined that those were mini seizures. Um, I lost the ability to write, lost the uh, ability to, uh, well, I wasn't ever a good, I was never a good multitasker, but I g got even worse at it. So paperwork just took me forever to do. In Tim's case, um, his tumor is so large that we actually had to do two craniotomies in order to get it all out. Uh, Dr. Chen, uh, he, he worked with uh, Dr. Jonathan Finley at the time, and uh, they both would always tell me that, look, you're not a statistic, you are a person. So don't consider yourself like you're gonna, you know, die in less than whatever amount of time. You're, there's no, it's, you're not terminal. In many cases, many doctors that do not actively treat this disease, and that I mean neuro-oncologists, they'll often tell patients that, you know, this is really a death uh, sentence that uh, you should consider, you know, having, spending good quality of time with your family, um, that maybe surgery, aside from a biopsy or, or some radiation, may be the only extent that you want to go through. Uh, but for um, neuro-oncologists, uh, we view this as a um, disease that, you know, everybody is different. So if when you look at the bell curve, um, you can't say that everybody's a death sentence. There's always going to be somebody that's going to do better than the average. And there's always going to be somebody that's going to have a chance of responding to therapy. And so with that type of attitude, um, you will get patients that will respond to treatment, that will respond to therapy, and that will eventually become long-term survivors like, like Tim, Tim, Tim has become. I had an incision from here up and around down to the ear, and uh, they removed a pretty good section of the, of the skull to get at the tumor, and um, they removed about 90% of it, which is phenomenal. Um, they, they had to stop because of, uh, you know, blood vessels or something that were real close and they didn't want to run the risk of, you know, me bleeding out or anything, so uh, the, the rest of the treatment would be then with the radiation and the chemo. If your feeling is that this is something that you want to try to optimize the treatment for the patient, you want to try to push the envelope to as far as you can go and try to get the patient the best chance for survival, then that's, then I think that's the main difference and, and, and in Tim's case we really did push the envelope. He had two surgeries, he had the full gamut of radiation and chemotherapy but he's still alive today. Right before the both surgeries, especially the second one, I, I remember talking to him when he came in and I said uh, I need you to hit this one out of the park and he just laughed and said yeah I will. So, and he did. 